Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. The reason why I've been gone for a couple of weeks is because, if you can hear it, I have been avoiding getting sick. But I'm sick now anyway. So, I'm making a video. We are doing an update on our carnivorous plants, our tuberous sun juice. And those ones back there are the ones I'm most excited to show you. Let me show them to you guys really quick. Check them out, guys. It's a rupee cola. This is the Stolonifera, which I want to show you guys, and that's the Colina. But stay to the end of the video, and we'll go through them properly, guys. But until then, let me show you how our tuberous sun juice have just gone crazy in the past three weeks since I last updated you guys. So as you can see, here's some Macrantha. It's always, it always looks the same, but it just gets longer. So now we have the traps coming all the way down here, mixing in with those. It's just insanely big, guys. I don't know why, but our auriculata, neither one of them have grown. Um, that's pretty strange because they're like one of the easiest ones to grow. But yeah, you know, at least we've got our Macrantas and all the others coming out. And yeah, they all look the same, pretty much, the Macrantas. Make these little stars. But yeah, they just get super, super long and they kind of grow on things and up things. Um, that's kind of their thing. These lung growers, they like to grow up into things or like spread out. And that's how they get like as much sun out and insects and whatever as they can. But yeah, that's our Macrantha. Over here, we've got a Platypoda, which if you guys remember, it was just a bulb coming out the ground. Sort of like that, but obviously bigger. And um, yeah, it's, it's coming... It's growing well now. Don't know how well you guys can even see this. Multiple little leaves kind of like coming off of each other. Nice little plant there. Next to it we have another Macrantha and I don't even know where it's going. It's just somewhere in that massive bush of uh, plant death, uh, I mean insect death. So if you're an insect, you gotta be pretty careful around here, these parts, because you will get caught by something. Next to it, next to it we have the Guniana. Let's see if I can get this. See guys, I, I'm, I just film with my phone, so it gets pretty tough to show you guys the how the plants exactly look, but yeah. This is the Guniana over here these shields shapes leaves very happy too over here we have our graniticola and like i've told you guys many times these guys are so like sturdy the stems are so strong unlike these that are like really loose and soft graniticola stem is so strong even though it's thin and it kind of it's like powdery almost it's a it's a like a powdery type of texture, like almost kind of like rubber. It's very cool. But yeah, we still have its babies coming out the ground there. Not much growth, but it's getting obviously longer as you guys can see. Very interesting little plant. Over here we have the Arame, which is contributing the most to this absolute mess that we have over here. And it also creates little starbursts. A very nice little looking plant there. Underneath it, Planconia, nothing from there, surprisingly. And I think that one there is Modesta. This one over here, nothing coming out. And not much happening back there either. However, if we look at our Andisoniana over here, you can see they have their ground growth. And then just above it, these long, tall ones are their upright growth. So they have like two forms, right? They start off growing on the ground and then they form these long, tall stems coming out of the plant. And they, you know, look like this. Very cool. Over there is Drostrum and Zissii. It's this plant here. They have a closer trap formation compared to the others where they're quite far apart and long. They're much more, what's the word, like close together. Can't think of the word right now because my head hurts. Um, yeah, like I said, I am sick, guys, which is why I sound weird, but yeah. And in the back, we have our Drosera guiniana, still with its ground growth, and something else over there. I have no idea what it is, guys, but yeah. That's the majority of our plants, and 
this macrantha over here that's growing up into the dead drosophilums. But they are all looking very similar. These plants, they generally look the same. They grow like these tall, big bushes, right? Um, aside from those, we have Drosera wittakeri over there. And I don't know what those other ones are. I think they're Aramae or something. Very nice looking ones. Those tubers. And then we have some seedlings coming up everywhere. But this is probably the most impressive one out of all the seedlings. This is Basifolia. Which, you know, has these upside down little traps. And they form very close to the base of the plant. But they are all very, very similar looking. As you guys can tell, they have a very similar shape of trap, you know, little starbursts, and they all kind of grow upright and up. And um, yeah, that's the majority of the tuber sundews in the collection. They're all growing in these really tall pots because they have long root systems. And then when summer comes around, they form the tubers underground. And if you use a, a short pot like this, they'll put the tubers into the water and then they rot away. And that's why I use these really tall pots, guys. So, yeah, if you guys can get some tall pots for your tuber sun juice, I definitely do recommend it. But, you, you know, these are the boring ones. Those ones over there are the interesting ones, which I am very excited to show you guys because over the past few videos, you guys have seen them kind of grow up. And then the past three or so weeks since I've been away, you know, hiding from getting sick, even though it didn't help, I'm still sick anyway. They've just kind of just exploded, especially the Rupicola. So let me set up the camera for you guys, and then we can go through each of them one by one. Okay guys, here we have our Drosera Rupicola. And as you can see, it is flowering, making these pretty little white flowers here. And it's been flowering for quite a while now, a couple of weeks. Um, hopefully we get some seed from it. I'm not holding my breath though, because it's just a singular plant here. But besides from that, guys, we have these beautiful traps. I really like the trap morphology here. They kind of stem out from the base of the plant, and then they have um, three or four traps like per node. I don't know how to really explain that. So check this one over here. You see there's, by my thumb, there's one plant that's eaten a fly. I mean, one trap is eaten a fly. And there, there, and there, there's another three traps. So that's four in total, all right? So each node coming down the stem, there's a node there, there's a node, there's a node. It has around three to four, many four traps that spread out, you know, in like a, like a star shape almost. And then obviously the, the traps themselves are this interesting circular type of pattern and they're very sticky, as you guys can tell. So they catch anything that, that gets stuck in there. Lots of little bugs and whatever else. You guys can see there's some mosquitoes over there. There's one there, one there. So yeah, that's great. They can eat as many of these damn mosquitoes as they want. I do not care about mosquitoes. I'm sure you guys agree. We don't need the mosquitoes uh, biting us. But anyway, very, very pretty plant and it's grown really well. And as you guys can see, it's becoming like floppy. It kind of starts to grow upside down onto the onto the ground if it were you know on flat ground but i have these plants standing by themselves so they would spread out you know like along the floor if you guys can imagine having these plants just laying all over the floor here these little these little traps like this like this on the ground and any insect that flies low to the ground looking for some food looking for some nectar or some dew to drink sees this plant and then it just you know flies and sits on it and gets eaten i'm talking to them to these mosquitoes over here specifically like this one right here hopefully um the mosquitoes hear me and try it out and then they all get eaten because you know we all hate mosquitoes even though they're important in our important in our world no one wants them to be bitten by mosquitoes so yeah just have to have these plants like all over the ground but anyway it would be an awesome sight to see that in the wild guys that's our dress for ruby cola beautiful looking plant there's no roots coming out the bottom which is great because if there were it means it's too big for the pot but anyway this plant has just grown incredibly so much in the past couple of weeks since i last updated you guys sorry about the wind obviously and you know there's a motorbike making noises in the background i can't help it over here this is our drosser colonna 
It's a beautiful, beautiful flax laying plant. Um, you guys can see it's caught a fly over there. And I'm not sure how well you guys can see this, but from the start of the little trichomes here, like down here, it kind of has, like, so from there, from the left of my finger, there's no trichomes, and then to the right, there's trichomes that kind of form like a margin coming down the trap, the leaf. It's very interesting, guys. Hopefully, we get a flower coming out of it this year. I don't think we will at the center of the plant. But even if we don't, it's still a beautiful looking plant. Little flat laying tuberous sundew that we have over here, contributing to um, eating all the different mosquitoes, which um, may come about. Can just imagine having like a platform of these guys. Like imagine you have a, um, you know, like a like a moss pole sort of thing, right? And you just have these plants that like, all stuck around the sides of the pole. How cool would that be, guys? I want to do that with pingucula, but you know, in Australia, for whatever reason, there's not many pingucula, um, which is why I've been telling you guys I want to move to the States, but I don't think it's going to happen because I just, I just can't get a visa. So the visa, the visa is the issue, um, unfortunately, unless someone wants to, someone, one of you guys owns a business, wants to sponsor me, then I can go there. Or someone wants to, you know, marry me. Uh, just a joke, guys. But yeah, to be honest, like I don't think I'll be able to go there because of the visa issues. But yeah, this is our beautiful Joshua Colina. Beautiful looking flat laying plant, guys. And our next up, we have our Drosera stolonifera. Now I need to adjust the camera because this one is so big. How's that, guys? If you guys remember, it was a bud coming out the ground, and now look how tall it is. It's formed all of these beautiful little traps, you know, coming out in five different directions, like a pentagon almost. And obviously these beautiful flowers on top. Beautiful white flowers. I'll show you guys the, the trap growth. You guys can see how it's unfurling and being created. It has similar trap structure to that of the Rupicola. And on every node, you guys can see, here's a node, here's a node, here, here, here. There are three little traps that stick out from each other. You guys can see this little insect getting eaten right down there. But they all kind of like sit around, you know, the traps are around the, the node. So there's no space, when, wherever the Wherever the trap is formed, there's like no space in between. If an insect comes and tries to land, you know, they're kind of weird. Insects like are not very perfect, you know. They're silly and they kind of fly up and down and then they get stuck, you know, because they aren't like, you know, missiles. They, just, they don't go... Sometimes they are basically like a cockroach that flies into you. You think they... You think that they can uh, have some type of autonomous... Some type of autonomous... Um, aiming stuff in them, those cockroaches when they land on you, but otherwise insects, they just are silly. They just kind of go up and down. And then because of that, there's so little space here that they do get stuck like that. And then they get eaten by our plants. And now once again, I am referring to mosquitoes. Hopefully they're listening and they do that. Um, but yeah, this is our beautiful Stolonifera. And we only have one. Um, I'm sure we had more tubers when we first got them, but only one has survived. Hopefully we get some seeds and once again, I'm not holding my breath because there's only one plant. They need like genetically different flowers, uh, plants to breed amongst them to get seeds sometimes. But yeah, guys, this is just a beautiful plant that we have as well. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this update. Sorry, I am low on energy. I don't sound good. I am sick. And yeah, if you guys want me to do a specific video on a specific plant or topic let me know questions email me facebook messenger me instagram me put them in the comments i'm happy to help everyone and if you're in australia i am selling some plants sorry i am selling plants just reach out to me and we can see what i have available for you other than that if you want to sponsor me to go to america please let me know um but yeah guys i'll see you guys in the next episode hopefully i have more energy and feel better then um yeah See you guys later.